Okay, so here is our second video, and this is just an example of using a calculator to find probability in a normal distribution. Okay, so uh, the instruction is in the first video, so here's the second video. So what is the probability that a randomly selected SAT score will be between 600 and 700? All right, so it's the same basic problem as in the instruction, but now I've just changed the lower bound just to make sure that we can do it. So we want to make a fresh sketch of the SAT math score distribution, labeling the mean. And here, the instructions are to do three standard deviations. And a lot of times, we probably should do three standard deviations. All right. Um, but in this particular case, we're only really concerned about the upper half, so I'm only going to do the plus ones. So I'm going to draw a straight line, or as straight as I can with this pen, okay? And then I draw my normal curve, all right, there. And here's my center, and I remember that my center is at 514, all right? And then now 514, okay, plus... 113 for a standard deviation gives me 627 okay so I am right here and I'm just guessing all right I had, I had a student in class ask how do you know that that goes there I'm like oh, I'm just kind of guessing okay and then to that I'm gonna add another 113 and I'm gonna get 740 and so I'm out here at two standard deviations is 740 and if I wanted to go one more standard deviation, I get 853. So right out here, at three standard deviations where this thing is really starting to get small, I'm at 853. Okay? Now, there are z-scores represented here. The z-score represented here is 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right? And so now, if I actually wanted to shade this in, 600 right about here, and again, how do you know it's there? I'm just, I'm just guessing. I'm just eyeballing it. But I do know that 600 is between 514 and 627. So that way I know my Z score should be between 0 and 1. All right? And so that's what we're looking for. That's our gut check. And then 700 is about halfway in between these guys right here. So it's going to go right about there. So here's my 600. And here's my 700 approximately. And this just lets me know that my 700 is going to be about halfway between 1 and 2. Okay. And so the area that I'm looking for, the probability, is the area under this section of curve right here. Excuse me. <coughs> All right. So now, show the calculations you would do to find this probability. Well, my z-score, that represents 600, is going to be equal to 600 minus 514 divided by the standard deviation of 113. And this was all given in the problem and should be all given in the problem. So I'm going to go over to my handy dandy calculator. I'm going to put instead of parentheses and do 600 minus 514 close parentheses divided by 113. It's real important that you put the parentheses in here if you're going to do this in one step. And I get a z-score of point seven six one that's the three decimal places that's what we're using as the standard in our class and then now for the z-score of 700 I'm going to do the same thing 700 minus 514 all divided by 113 and that's going to give me a z-score again parentheses 700 minus 514 close divided by 113 enter and I get one 1.646 right for three decimal places and so this makes us happy all right this z score this z score is between 0 and 1 this z score is between 1 and 2 in fact it's about halfway like we estimated it to be and so that really makes us happy because we've done those calculations correctly all right now the last thing that we want to do is we need to put these into our normal CDF function with 0.761 going first, our comma, and then a 1.646 going second and then closing our parentheses. And that's going to give us 
the area, the probability underneath the curve between these two values, between those two values right here. So again, where is it? Second, vars, two for normal CDF. I'm gonna put in 0 0.761. If yours looks like this, you put the comma in, 1.646. All right, the mean is zero because remember we're using we're using the z-scores, and so the mean for the z-scores is zero, okay, and the standard deviation is one, right? It just takes the value is one, one standard deviation away. So those two guys are going to stay like that, and then I hit enter, okay, and then if you need to hit enter again, you should. And so now out pops the wonderful uh, 0.173 to three decimal places. And again, if you got 0.175, I'm okay with that. If you got 1, 0.171, I'm probably okay with that. Anything in this range of values is going to get full credit. Okay? And, and that really makes us happy. Right? It's like the sun is shining. Okay, and then last but certainly not least, we need to state the conclusion of the problem in context. And remember here, okay, um, we needed the area, right? We need the trait, and then we need the values that we were interested in. So I'm going to write this as 17.3% um, of SAT math scores are between 600 and 700, All right? And that is the example of using the CDF nice and slow, calculating everything out, all right? I hope you've enjoyed this example. Uh, there may be another example um, and then uh, we're going to go on to the inverse norm.